My philosophy has always been share your story or someone will write it for you. Arrow.net, A-R-R-O-E.net. Let's do it. Let's play it forward. These are real people, real stories. The struggle to play it forward. Episode number 452 is with Chef Andre Rush. Hey, good morning, my friend. I'm doing excellent. What about yourself? Doing fantastic. I'm here in the South, so I can really relate with what you're putting into this book. <laughs> and I mean, it's like to, to, to really, you know, you, you have always been so loyal to the South in the way of preparing food as well as just being a gentleman of course of course i mean uh, you know i'm from a little small town as you know we're south we're different you know i tell people demographically from new jersey to new york to la i mean the south is completely different with hospitality with culture and so many different things and and i i I left there a long time ago but i appreciate and i love my heritage in the south when did you realize that you were growing in that direction of becoming a chef because i mean i didn't discover real cooking until the lockdown i went wow i have wasted a lot of my life i should have been in in the food business you know, it's funny because when lockdown happened, I think everybody became a chef and a fitness expert, <laughs> which was kind of comical with me because I started keep I kept doing what I was doing and started speaking more. And you asked me when did I realize I was beca- I never realized I was becoming a chef. And I even when I got the title of chef, it was just a check. And I just kept going like I do right now. I got some TV shows going. I got some other things behind the scenes. You know, I got my food company with uh, healthy foods, you know, chow. And, and I just check and I just keep going because there's, you know, at the top of uh, one mountain is, is also the bottom of another. You bet. You're absolutely right about that. You know, creativity is that one thing that we keep tapping into. And if we find faith in creativity, then then we, we answer the call. And then because and and, it's always about sharing with other people. Exactly. I love that. For you to now, I'm a, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a third degree black belt, and I gotta I gotta tell you, when I read that you you did 2,222 push-ups a day, it's like okay, I know that we had to do a thousand push-ups to get our first degree. What what gives here? What what's your what's your gain here with 2,222? How did you do it? Um, you know, it's funny because I'm in that world also with black belts. From Billy Blanks to all the the, the shy masters that were here in L.A. with me. Um, <laughs> It was just, you you don't even think about it. I mean, it's about endurance. I'm an endurance trainer. So mm-hmm. for me, it came early. I actually started in the military, but when I, like I said, I have PTSD and I was in an inpatient and doing those 15 minute breaks, I used to have all the guys come out. And I would say you have to do 500 push-ups in 15 minutes or if you got finished earlier, you could have whatever time is left. Or if you didn't, you just had to keep going, right? And you know, they learned really quick that they could do those 500 they wanted to break. And when uh, the 22 vets came up to commit suicide a day and everybody was doing 22 push-ups a day, I said, that wasn't enough for me. I wanted to get more attention. I needed more. I needed more people to take this serious because a you know, big guy like me doing 22, you're not even going to blink an eye. You're like, you know, you can do more. And I did more. Mm-hmm. And it was for a reason. And, uh, and I keep still do more. One of the things that I learned in in becoming a a push upper, I'll call it, is the fact that I would go into a state of meditation. And and what the way that I worked that was that in in my first degree black belt test, I did a brick break, a double brick break from a push up position, which which can be seen on my website. And and so because I believe that when you get into that push up position, it's almost like you're saying I sacrificed my life for the world. Now, where can we grow from here? I, I love that. You're exactly right. I use my chi, right? And so it always comes down at the bottom and you always bring it up. Like when I do my meditation, I meditate at three o'clock in the morning, I roll over, I get on the ground and there's nothing. Mm-hmm. There's nothing. And I literally, uh, it's, it's, it's like silence, no, no music. It is like you're going into this trance where you have to say, I give myself to you, yep. right? I think about all the things, the people that are not here, people that have suffered, people that are suffering, people that have failed, people that have all those things come to a uh, fruition, and I, and I use it for that. So when, when you would prepare a meal for a president, was it, was it like you're, you're sharing your art? Because it, it, the energy was moving through you to reach them and their world leaders. Yes, yes. It's, it's always food is food is so many different things and what it is. You know, when people taste the food, it's I taste the heritage. I taste the love. I taste. And I want you to feel that each and every time because food's just that medication, holistic, family, friends, loving, caring, sharing, all those different things that food are that we kind of take advantage of and 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 just forget that it's not just for consumption. Right. It's for nutrition. See, that's that's the way I build my day. It's it, you know, it's like this. The, I always tell my wife, it's not a breakfast; it's a breakfast. We don't have to overdo it in the morning. 
It's true. Very true. But a lot of people like to do that. They, they like to overfill in the morning because they think that's going to take them through the rest of the day. And it's like, wow, I don't know if that's really good for the brain. No, it's not. I'm a big guy. I eat a lot and I do. I eat a, a lot, but I'm also an endurance trainer. So that's how I can be able to keep this up every day. But you have to put it in for that intake and that outtake. Right. And people get it kind of confused a lot, especially this day and age, because everybody in this this so-called fitness phase with listening to each and every person and trying to do each and everything and taking each and every supplemental vitamin that they think is out there instead of just listening to their body first. Mm-hmm. Do you think that people don't understand the true definition of what perseverance is? It's almost like they reach a goal and they said, okay, I'm done. I'm going to go try something new. No, they don't. They, 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 they absolutely don't. And I agree with that 100%. And they have to realize that okay, I'm done. It's not being done. You know, if you stop, you got to keep going. I, like I said, again, the bottom of, a, of the top of one mountain is the bottom of the next. And you got to just keep going. Also, you can grow other people to go with you. So you're never done. You can bring someone with you along with a journey or a hundred, a thousand, a million. We're, we're both black belts. Would you say that, that writing a book like this is that this is part of the way? Because martial arts is the foot fist way. And a lot of people don't understand the way means community. The way it does need community, and we are that community, and you're nothing without a community. Community, he grows the best leaders, carers, givers uh, in the world, you know, and you, uh, you know, it's like givers. You have givers and givers, you know, and this, uh, I was just talking to the guy from Black Belt Magazine in Germany yesterday, and we're talking, he's coming here next week, and um, you have givers. I say you have givers, you never go broke, you never go wrong, you never go hungry, because you have to worry about no intentions, nobody looking over your back, no, no worries whatsoever that's the community were, were you trained in the way that it's like uh, my my Sabanin would always tell me he says this is not about going out to find the fight this is how to to walk around where there is a bad position that, that is true always always yeah how do you train other people who have not gone through the ranks because i mean they, i'll tell you how it works it's like i was with some broadcasters yesterday at a university and i said i i think of you as white belts and the reason why is because because you're just learning this business i can't give you a green belt project if you're only a white belt and that's, that's that's correct and you have to it's all about putting in the work you have to do the work you have to do the work you have to do the time uh, a lot of people now has that entitlement you know that lack of gratitude and that lack of humility you're going to have to put in the work and if i'm leading you i'm going to lead you but if i have to follow i'm going to be the best follower to lead you to what you need to do living in the presence of now is that a tough thing for you to do Living in the presence of now is 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 tough, but it's a necessary toughness, yep. right? And you you have to you have to live in that presence now because the past is the past. And so the reason why it's the past, I don't I remember the past. I take from the past and I use the past as an ally and a gateway to my present and my future. Yeah. So like when when you're an endurance coach, how is it that you can get into the mindset of of, of basically a traveler? You you know they're seeking, but if if they don't if they don't find themselves in that place of growth. They're, they're, they're just going to be a bump on a log. But how do you get them to reach beyond it? Um, how do I, I show them. Oh. <laughs> it's very simple. I show them. Everybody has just... They can look. They can look as far as their their hand can go, mm-hmm. right? They move your hand out of the way and look further. <laughs> it's, it's just that simple. They like I can't see it. Move your doggone hand and look. <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. That's so true. So when you write a book, call me chef, damn it. What th- th- I've always believed, because I'm a writer as well, is that when you free up that space, if you don't plant new seeds in that area that you just freed up, you're going to shrink. How? D- what, what have you done differently now, now that you have freed these words from your mind, body, and soul? Uh, I started over. Uh, you're right. It's a different space. You know, I was very transparent. I opened up. I let out things that I would never want to say out loud uh, just because of the realm I've been in within the political military <clears throat> and I know people were shunned because they're in that space right it wasn't about them it's about everyone and I didn't want to think about just who you are I think about the, the underdogs I think about the kids I think the successors I think about the failures and I use it for them as the conduit so everybody can learn from it whether you're in corporate whether you're in the projects or whether you're just a good person or even a not so good person I'm so glad you said that because I study Native American spirituality and one of the things that the medicine man was always doing he was always looking for the next one that that would follow him but it became it had to be someone with energy and and most of the time it was the bad child do do you find yourself in that situation too it's like okay you've got the energy i know you're doing bad but you've got energy that can become very positive in somebody's life 
All the time, all the time. And that's why I love doing what I do. I answer all my DM, my messages, and I have people that was angry, people this way, that way, and it's their energy. I'm an energy person. I, I feed off of energy to death. It's my lifeline. It's what I do. It's who I do and how I have to convert it, whether it's good or bad or indifferent. I have to take that energy in and process it to distribute it back out, and I have to disrupt it in a way where I can distribute it out the right way. So as an endurance coach, how do you look at the clock? Because I mean, a lot of people are, you know, are challenged by the clock. I always look at it as being, there are 14 songs in one hour. We're only on song number seven. We, we, and so I don't, I don't look at the hands of the clock. I listen to the music. Uh, I listen to my heartbeat. Yes. <laughs> my heart. Yeah, you're exactly right about that. People that worry about that clock all the time and they're looking at it. And you know, when they look at that, um, they automatic their brain just it's like those numbers when i i train people and they get to the number 12 and i said no we're doing 100 when they get to 12 all of a sudden they're going great and then all of a sudden they just stop because they're thinking about that number i said be quiet shut up <laughs> don't think about it and believe me you know it works <laughs> you know it works oh my god i'll never forget my first uh, sensei in combat karate and he and i and he wanted when i was doing push-ups i wouldn't count i would do the alphabet and oh my god that upset him badly i was i was like well no i'm, I'm still counting i'm just using the alphabet Alphabet. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! You, so, are, are you podcasting? What else are you doing? Because you're too creative to sit there and just let this be a book. Oh my God! No, I uh, I just did my food line, uh, Chow. Uh, that's out now, fresh, blah, 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 over forty eight states. I'm doing a knife. I have that I'm good now from Japan that you would love. I um I'm doing a lot of TV shows now, which uh with Gordon Ramsay and oh my Disney. God other people and i'm still speaking all over the country and just spreading energy just giving back don't you feel like that you are being used as a tool in the way that you know you we we can change the future if we become the the group of because i'm always afraid of this generation this i don't want this generation to be the one that broke it yes yes and and that's what i'm afraid of and we are tools we are conduits until the next generation and you you hit it on the head because it's getting lost now and in the last few years with all the things from the pandemic to the racial divide to the capital and uh, russia and ukraine and the, uh, just afghanistan i i get involved in all those tough situations because it takes people that that's tougher to do that like us yeah andre or chef you've in fact how did i do that it says call me chef damn it chef please come back to this show anytime in the future thank you so much sir it was a pleasure you be brilliant today okay you as well